Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a combination of GPT-3 AI, network visualization and text mining to make sense of your ideas, to get an overview of your thoughts and to develop them further. Here is how it works. So first of all, I'm going to open the Infranodus app. Uh, I leave a link in the description below. And I'm going to go to AI ideation and go to live AI ideation app. And here I'm just going to start with the first idea. So for instance, in this case, it's going to be Vipassana meditation. What happens here is that it sends uh, this to GPT-3 and uh, GPT-3 generates an interesting fact that relates to this topic. So here it says what Vipassana meditation is. Actually, it's quite a nice definition. I'm going to add it into the graph. Then I can generate more fact. Uh, add another one into the graph, another fact, great. And as you see, as I'm adding those facts into the graph, they're visualized, the main topics are highlighted, they're bigger on the graph, the words that I used in the same context are also close to each other here and have the same color. And we have the analytics panel that shows what those main topics are in the graph, right? So then I get a quick overview, which allows me to zoom out any moment on my ideas, but I can also zoom in and continue writing. So for instance, let's say I visualize these three thoughts and I want to talk more about mindfulness. I'm going to click Vipassana Meditation Mindfulness and then I go into the Insight AI Insight app and then uh, I just click this one again. So I have them selected Vipassana Meditation Mindfulness and generate another fact that relates to those topics. So now it's going to be more specifically on mindfulness and how we pass the meditation as a mindful, mindfulness practice for reducing stress and anxiety. Okay, add this fact. Then uh, Vipassana means insight and valley, which is the oldest. Okay, this is not so relevant. Right, so here it says this form of mindfulness has been practiced for 2,500 years. So maybe I just added this Vipassana form of mindfulness and then add it into the graph. And you see, I'm building this discourse anytime I have a visualization of the overview, which allows me to see the big picture. And I can also zoom in and focus on the specific parts that I'm interested in. For instance, let's say I want to depart a little bit from Vipassana meditation and just talk about Indian spiritual practices and meditation. So I click on that, generate another fact that relates specifically to Indian spiritual practices and how meditation is used to connect with the divine or achieve a higher state of consciousness. And you see we're developing now this cluster here. So the network is growing from the periphery. And this is great because normally when you write, after a few sentences, you kind of lack an overview of the ideas here. You really can use the graph to generate a very wholesome, discourse that doesn't only focus on the most important terms but also develops the periphery of your ideas. And by the way, if you don't know how to read graphs, there are several tools here that motivate you to move towards the periphery and to bridge the blind spots in your ideas. So one is that in the analytics panel you have gap insight which detects the gaps in your discourse. So here it says you have a structural gap between these two topics and then it can generate a research question for you that you can use to develop these ideas further. So for example, here, how does the divine connect to the state to achieve a higher consciousness? So how can the divine be used to reach higher consciousness and why it happens? That's an interesting question. I could take time to think about it and add this into the graph myself. So I don't only have to use the AI to write something for me. I can also write my own ideas. Here I'm going to say that uh, connecting to the divine is a form of higher consciousness because it makes us notice more subtle things. And here I don't care about constructing a really coherent narrative. For now I'm just gathering ideas. And you see here my ideas are marked as ideas so I can filter them also and see only the ideas I added 
see the AI content or facts that was added or all the statements at once, right? So I can also filter the graph by the type of the ideas I added and separate my own ideas from the ones that were generated with the AI. I can generate more questions and use these, uh, these questions to help me think in this direction. I can also, if I don't want to answer the questions, let's say just want hard facts, I can click on the facts and then it's going to generate some facts that bridge the structural gap between those ideas. Okay, so add some ideas into the graph, continue writing. Then you also have this function here, which shows you, it basically is based on this uh, ecological thinking framework that we developed. So in a nutshell, the way it works is when your ideas are too dispersed, it's going to recommend you to connect those ideas. If they are connected, it's going to recommend you to disperse them. And here, the actionable insight is to diversify, so to make them more dispersed. And if I click here, it's going to explain how it can be done. Or if I don't want to read the science behind it, I can just click on generate AI suggestions and it's going to automatically select the topics, the parts of the discourse that it detected using net network analysis. So that's the advantage of representing the text as a network because you see the structure and you know which ideas are less represented. And then you generate AI content that will focus on those less represented ideas. How does the level of consciousness of a person affect how much they notice? Maybe something about attention and the different modes of attention, which can be interesting to explore. How does Gautama Buddha's teaching on consciousness and mindfulness affect the way we notice and attend to high-level information on our daily life? So maybe this is a bit more specific. We can skip that. Uh, how does Buddha's teaching on consciousness and noticing affect how high school teachers teach their students? Okay, so something about education. And here, when I notice something like this that kind of relates to the main discourse, but not completely, but could be an interesting new tangent to follow, what I do is that I click Save to Notes, and it opens the panel here, you see, and then uh, I save it into the project notes, and I later use those notes to develop um, maybe another text or to kind of go into more detail on another subject. So this is a really interesting feature. I also recommend you to use it. So not only saving stuff into the graph, but also into the project notes if you have something interesting that came up. Then let's generate more stuff that help us develop this periphery. There's two topics here, spiritual practices and uh, Indian teachings of Buddha. How does the concept of mindfulness as taught by Buddha relate to the Western concept of consciousness? Okay, these are really interesting questions. Maybe I can try to answer here that the Western concept of consciousness is related to rationality while mindfulness might be related to awareness. The way we use this rationality, what we give attention to, etc. So you see I use the AI to help me generate some ideas. I add them into the graph. As I add them, they are highlighted. So you saw it was highlighted as it was added. I can see where exactly my new idea fits into the existing discourse. And I deselect the whole graph. Um, and then also you can use this blue button here to generate other suggestions. And that feature here works in the way that it detects which state you've been most of the time in. So here it shows we were mainly in the focused state. They're all explained here, actually. Uh, and there is a help article also here that explains them in more detail. So now I see that it recommends me to go into this other state. And then if I click on the button here, it's going to select a different topic, uh, like a different cluster in the graph, and help me think about things that are underrepresented here. So that's also quite important because often when we write the text, we focus on the main topics, but 
to make it really diverse, to really go into all the different interesting parts of the discourse, it's also important to go to the periphery. And here, if found, you see that we have this, this cluster of consciousness and practice. So the orange one and the green one here, right? And then it asks us, is there a connection between consciousness and spirituality? So that's also quite interesting, the connection between consciousness and spirituality in relation to meditation. I can say that uh, perhaps spirituality is something that is more unconscious. However, we can rationalize it using our conscious mind. So you see, I'm kind of uh, writing some ideas I already have. I use the AI to generate new ideas. And then once I have the whole structure, I get an overview, I zoom out, I look at the main topics. Maybe it helps me have a better understanding of the totality of my discourse, but also what are the main things I'm talking about. And then I zoom back in and ask some interesting questions using the AI to help me generate new ideas. So basically this is how it works. Uh, I will later put in a longer video where I just go through the whole process. So now I kind of jumped on the main elements. If you're interested to see the whole process from the beginning until the end, please let me know because I'm not sure if people want to watch like an hour long video. But if that's something that interests you, let me know in the comments and I will post it online. Um, otherwise, try it out on infranodos.com. Uh, use the graph, use the analytics panel, use the blue buttons that generate interesting ideas for you using GPT-3 AI and let me know what you think and if you like using it. Thank you very much.